This point in the conversation on chemical kinetics always makes me think back to how mystified and intimidated I was as an undergraduate by differential equations. In fact, we've been dealing with a differential equation in this unit on kinetics. The differential rate law is suggested by the name. Look at it, right? It is a derivative, if we're talking about instantaneous rate, dA dt. Let's throw a negative sign out front, just thinking about A as a reactant. A derivative on the left-hand side and some expression involving A, the concentration of A, on the right-hand side. This is a differential equation, and that might be interesting mathematically, but experimentally, it's not super helpful, right? It's inconvenient to measure reaction rates. We often don't measure reaction rates directly. We have to calculate them by looking at rates of change between two adjacent measured time points. What we really would like to have for mathematical manipulation and problem solving is the direct dependence of A, the concentration of A, on time, some function of time that tells us the concentration of A at any time point after the reaction has started. This is what's known as the integrated rate law, and as suggested by the name, we arrive at it by integrating the differential rate law. That sounds complicated, but I want to emphasize that the integrated rate law is just the time dependence of the concentration of A, the concentration of a reactant. We can use it to fit our experimental data directly, since typically what we measure in kinetics experiments is how concentration changes over time. We measure concentration at various closely spaced time points, and we've seen graphs that depict that. Already. So in this video, we're going to survey the different integrated rate laws for the three possible kinetic orders, zero order, first order, and second order, and talk a little bit about how we can use the integrated rate laws to infer, for example, what a future concentration of a reactant or product will be given the form of the rate law, the rate constant, and the amount of time that's elapsed. Let's begin with a definition. Integration of the differential rate law results in a function of time that relates the concentration of A to the time progress or the, the amount of time that has elapsed as the reaction takes place. And this is what's known as the integrated rate law. So for a general reaction involving little a molecules of A forming products, the integrated rate law, and this is a highly general, almost so general as to not be useful equation, uh, a highly general form of the integrated rate law says the concentration of A is equal to some function of the rate constant K time and the initial concentration of A, which is going to impact how much is left after some amount of time has elapsed. This equation is shown in graphical form at the bottom of this slide. We've got the concentration of A on the y-axis, time on the x-axis, and that initial concentration of A is our measurement right at the start of the reaction. The decay in the concentration of A over time is expressed mathematically by the integrated rate law. So as I mentioned, it provides us a way to directly fit our experimental data, measurements of the concentration of A over time, to a mathematical equation, to a mathematical model. We can't exactly do that without jumping through some mathematical hoops using the differential rate law alone. What we're going to do now is derive the integrated rate laws for first order, second order, and zero order kinetics, starting from the differential rate laws that we already know, and applying a little bit of calculus. So let's start with the first order case. We've got a generic first order reaction, little a molecules of A going to products. First order tells us that the differential rate law has this form, negative one over A dA dt, that's our standard rate expression, right, is equal to K times the concentration of A. Now let's integrate both sides. Integrate the left-hand side with respect to A and integrate the right-hand side with respect to time. And we end up with the following equation. A concentration at any time point is equal to the initial concentration of A, let's call that A0, e to the negative kt. And I'll let you verify the math on your own. You can see the math in your textbook, out there on the internet, it's, it's out there. This is pretty straightforward calculus if you've been through calculus too. This is one form of the integrated rate law, and it provides a direct way for us to, for example, plug in a time t if we know the rate constant, we know the initial concentration, the only remaining unknown is the concentration of A at T, and out pops a number, out pops a concentration, that's the concentration at time T. We can take the natural log 
of both sides. And then what we get what I like to call the linearized form, which uh, it will become apparent why we call it this here shortly. We can also think about the linearized form between two time points, T1 and T2, with associated concentrations, A1 and A2. And that's the multipoint form that you see in the bottom of the box. The reason we call the linearized form linearized is that this equation expresses a linear relationship between some function of A, here it's the natural log, function of A's concentration, and time, where the slope, the proportionality constant, if you will, between this function of A concentration and time, includes the rate constant. So say, for example, we collected some experimental data, experimental measurements of A's concentration over time, and we observed this linear decrease in the natural log of A concentration with time. Well, notice the natural log of A on the y-axis, time on the x-axis. The linearized form has the form of an equation y equals mx plus b, where y is the natural log of A, x is t, m is negative k, and b, the y-intercept, is the natural log of A0 concentration. So from the slope, we can infer the rate constant, and more generally, we can say that if we collect data that fits this model, this kinetic model, we can infer that the reaction is first order in A. So by following the concentration of A over time and applying the natural log function to those concentration measurements, we can infer that the reaction is first order in A if the application of the natural log linearizes the data like this. We'll see analogous conclusions we can draw for second and zero order kinetics on the upcoming slides. For the second order case, we have the differential rate law shown here with our standard rate expression on the left hand side being equal to k times a squared. And if you rearrange things and integrate both sides here, you arrive at the functional form shown at the top of the second box. The concentration of a at some time point t is equal to 1 over k times t plus 1 over a0. So that whole thing in parentheses raised to the negative 1 power. The linearized form is a little bit easier to get a handle on. It's 1 over the a concentration, or a concentration to the negative 1 power, is equal to k times t plus 1 over a0, or a0 concentration to the negative 1 power. And the multipoint form here just uses, again, two different time points, t1 and t2, and their associated concentrations, A1 and A2. Notice again, in the linearized form here, we have some function of A concentration. Here, it's 1 over the concentration of A is linearly related to time. And the constant of proportionality here, the slope of the line is k, positive k. Now, in the y-intercept is 1 over A0, the initial concentration of A. So again here, if we collect kinetic data concentration over time and we apply one over the concentration to each concentration measurement, we plot those against their measured time points and we get a line, we can infer that the reaction is second order in A. And we get a measurement of the rate constant. Finally, for a generic zero order reaction, we have the rate law shown here. Our standard rate expression equal to K. A doesn't appear at all. Integrating this actually might be the easiest exercise of the three, and we arrive at the functional form that you see at the top of the second box. The concentration of A at a future time point is negative kT plus initial concentration of A. And so here again, the linearized form actually is identical to the functional form. A is linearly related to time. A changes linearly with time. And so if we plot our kinetic data just with concentration on the y-axis and time on the x-axis, and it looks linear from the get-go, the concentration of A is decreasing linearly with time, the reaction is zero order in A. And we can get the rate constant just by looking at the slope of that line, analogously to the other two orders, where here the slope is negative k because of the negative sign showing up on the right-hand side of the linearized form. There's also a multipoint form where we kind of subtract A0 from both sides, and we can say, a concentration minus A0 concentration, the initial A concentration, is equal to negative KT. So to summarize, we've looked at the three different integrated rate laws for the orders first order, second order, 
and zero order. In the next video, we're going to practice applying these equations, and they're most useful for inferring a concentration in the future of a reaction or figuring out how much time it's going to take to consume or produce some amount of reactant or product respectively.